Hi there, I wanted to share a little talk about the top 12 seeds you'd wanna plant for a new garden. So this time of year is when you might be pouring through seed catalogs or looking at seed websites and maybe totally bewildered by all the diversity and colors and variety that you see. However, I want to remind you of a great principle from permaculture, which is to start small and then you harvest small mistakes. So while you might think things like carrots and melons are really appealing, and they are, they're quite advanced to be able to grow for a new time, uh, a new gardener. Or if it's your first time, even your first couple of years, they really take um, just more steps that are more difficult. So even though you might see things in the grocery store or at the farmer's market, and that they'll, they're will they everywhere, like carrots is totally ubiquitous. They're actually quite difficult to grow. By and large, because the seed takes a long time to germinate, you have to direct seed it and the seedlings grow very slowly and they're difficult to differentiate from the weeds. So that actually, as a seed company owner, that is our number one customer service complaint is I got carrot seeds from you and they didn't come up. And we always try and gently uh, guide people through their learning experience, but you know, birds can eat them, they can get lost in the weeds, or you fail to water them over that two week uh, germination period and they just dried out. So what I wanted to share is what is simple, what works well, and will give you rewards because you want your, your experience gardening to be a series of successes. So radishes, first on the list, is super easy to grow it's the classic go-to for children's gardens because you plant the seeds and the seeds are are larger than your average you know really small seed and within 30 to 40 days you're harvesting radishes so it's a real uh, instant gratification maybe not instant but rapid and you can continue to plant them and um, have a continual harvest and while you might not eat radishes in other parts of the world or people who are growing more of their own food really rely on them to fill in the gaps between other crops so one of my favorite ways to do radishes when they're in season is to slice them thinly and chop up some cilantro and squeeze some lime juice on it maybe a little balsamic vinegar and it's incredible you can mix it with other things but as a side dish uh, they're they're wonderful that way uh, next would be cilantro speak of the herb and there it is and cilantro is having its moment in the sun if you will and uh, is showing up in more and more recipes and cuisines it's super easy to grow large seeds you direct seed it and within 30 to 50 days you're harvesting leaves and if you let the plant go to flower and bolt then you have coriander seeds and future cilantro seeds arugula is another really fast growing herb and again it's becoming more popular, I think, with the advent of the baby leaf arugula showing up in lots of grocery stores. You can grow your own, and it's about 30 to 40 days from seeding to where you're cutting the first leaves that might be two or three inches tall, and you could successively harvest that or thin them out and have a continual supply of wonderful salad. And speaking of salad, is lettuce, and that's a fairly easy to grow. You can direct seed it and just harvest the leaves as like baby leaves for salad or space them out six to 12 inches and let them grow into heads. Zucchini is the classic uh, overabundance element of a new garden, but that really is a blessing in terms of its uh, productivity and really being able to grow a lot of food. And it also compels you to explore new recipes for utilizing all the fruits. Green beans are kind of in that same category, and the green beans you can pick right out of your garden fresh at the right stage are so tender and sweet and delicious, whereas oftentimes the ones you get in the store, they've been sitting around for too long and um, or, or maybe have gone over mature. So green beans are one that, too, we typically will do successive plantings to have a continual harvest. Kale, uh, you can grow from direct seed or grow it as a transplant. Uh, either way really works, but the beauty of kale is it thrives in the cool weather, whereas uh, zucchini and green beans uh, require warmer weather to produce. Where kale, if you plant kale, let's say late summer, you'll have it all fall, all winter, all spring, and even into the beginning of summer before it bolts. So it really provides food for a 
a full year for you. Uh, and then you've got an abundance of dark leafy greens that is going to compel you to incorporate it in all sorts of recipes, whether it's eggs or soups or chopped up pine for a massaged kale salad. Cherry tomatoes are another classic one, kind of like green beans where they're best enjoyed right in the garden. Tomatoes, they're further down on this list here because you really can't direct seed them. The seeds are really small. They require temperatures of at least 70 degrees Fahrenheit to sprout. So you're gonna to wanna to start them indoors, like in a sunny window. You can use old egg cartons, fill it with potting soil. That's a really low tech. We'll have other videos you can see in the video description below talking about how to make potting soil and how to start seeds. But there's nothing quite like being in a summer garden and picking cherry tomatoes fresh and just eating them right off the plant. Peas are kind of like that too. And this is like the cool season version of cherry tom tomatoes. And peas, the sugars in the snap peas, the edible pod ones begin converting to starches really rapidly. So even if you get, you know, quote unquote, fresh ones from the market, they've been off the plant for at least a day and they're never gonna be as good as when you eat them right off the vine. So you can direct seed peas here. We'll do our first planting in February and we can do February and March and again, a fall planting that we can do in August. And there's bush varieties and trellised pole varieties and I suggest planting some of each, but the bush ones are easier. Cucumbers are another awesome summer garden staple. Pretty easy to grow. You can direct seed them. They do require 70 degree or warmer soil temperatures. So you're gonna to need to wait until later May to plant those unless you have an ability to growing starts and you can start them inside. But they just keep producing and making fruit over and over and then it keeps you eating fresh uh, cucumbers. My favorite way to enjoy cucumbers lately has been to slice them up and sprinkle them with tahini, which is a mixture of salt and dried chilies and lime. And it, it takes them from a nice snack to a gourmet delicacy. Speaking of delicacies, basil really ha it has, is a staple culinary herb for any garden. If, if you're starting a new garden or it's your first time, or you're gonna wanna have some fresh basil because it's something that its quality diminishes really rapidly after harvest. So the stuff you can get in the store is never as aromatic, as um, savory and delicious as what you can grow yourself. And if you're growing it yourself, you can also dry a bunch of it and have it year round. And you'll find yourself using a lot more basil than when you perhaps bought it in the past. And down at the bottom, I put broccoli on there. And that is a bit of a more advanced crop to grow. You really can't direct seed broccoli. So you need to grow it from starts. But the beauty of growing it in your garden, as opposed to buying it in the stores, in the store, all you ever see is the, uh, what we call stock wheat. You know, it's mostly stock and a little bit of a head. But when you grow it yourself, after you harvest that main head, you'll get a profusion of side shoots, particularly if you grow one of the heirloom or open pollinated varieties, because they'll produce for a much longer, maybe even the whole summer, if you keep those side shoots picked. And they're really more tender and more flavorful and have more nutrition in them than the, the stock of the typical commercial broccoli. So down in the uh, video notes, I'll also put a link to, we I made a chart with classifying most of the common garden crops as easy, medium, or difficult. And I think that's a really good starting point. And I, again, encourage you to do what's easy and build a foundation of small successes and grow food for yourself and your family and grow beauty for the whole world. So thanks.